Coming number 10, Brendan Fraser. So recently I did a video about celebrities who had lost it all and never recovered, and unbeknownst to me, Brendan Fraser has indeed recovered quite well, so let's go over it. With a few upcoming movie roles, it appears like Brendan Fraser is indeed back at it, an era that is now being dubbed the Renaissance. Pretty funny and I like that. Many people really enjoyed watching him in the DC series Doom Patrol, but they're also going to get to see him in big projects like Martin Scorsese's Apple TV film called Killers of the Flower Moon, and he will also be starring alongside the likes of Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro. Back in 2018, Frazier briefly spoke about these several events in his personal life that kept him out of Hollywood. While speaking with GQ, he said that he had changed houses, went through a divorce, plus he just wanted to spend more time with his kids. And he also revealed the physical toll that his career had had on him over the years. By the time that he had finished his third mummy film in China, he said that he was basically being held together with tape and ice, which meant that he would spend seven years in and out of hospital due to the injuries that he had sustained from doing his own stunts. But with all of that behind him now, we are so happy to see that Brendan is back and better than ever. Coming number nine, Winona Ryder. Now when it comes to excuses for shoplifting, Winona takes the cake. Her, her week long shoplifting trial in 2002 ended with a guilty verdict on the charges of grand theft and vandalism. This comes after she walked away with more than $5,500 in merchandise stolen from Saks Fifth Avenue in Beverly Hills. She was however found not guilty of commercial burglary, which requires proof that she entered the store with the intention to steal. Although interestingly enough, the store's security chief testified that the actress claimed her theft was just her way of getting into a character for an upcoming role. She was sentenced to three years supervised probation, ordered to do $400. 180 hours of community service and fined a total of $2,700. Ryder was also ordered to pay compensation to Saks for the stolen items and undergo counseling. However, after taking some years off from acting to work on herself, she made an amazing comeback when she was cast in Stranger Things. Coming number eight, Robert Downey Jr. At this point, it's pretty common knowledge that RDJ had a history of addiction, but what most people didn't realize is that his issues all began at six years old. His father was a filmmaker and addict who enjoyed giving his young son a to smoke at the age of six. Downey claimed that he was surrounded by drugs as a young kid and often used drugs as a way to bond with his troubled father. He believed that when they did this together that it was his father's way of expressing love for him, the only way that he knew how. He nearly ended his acting career after being arrested several times for possession of cocaine, heroin, and marijuana before spending a year in prison in 1999, which meant the cancellation of several acting jobs. Director Jodie Foster even caught him doing c*** on the set of her movie called Home for the Holidays. She begged him to get help, but Downey would continue to spiral out of control. After struggling even more with abuse between 2001 and 2003, Downey finally was able to kick the habit through a combination of the 12-step program, meditation, yoga, and martial arts training. Plus, being cast as Iron Man certainly helped give him more credibility in the world of acting. Coming number 7, Neil Patrick Harris. Neil Patrick Harris is well known for his portrayal of both likably average and flamboyantly unconventional characters. Neil first rose to fame as the star of Doogie Howser's MD in the early 1990s, but sadly it took him a while following that to repeat this level of success. Finally in 2004, he made a cameo as a sort of fictional version of himself in the film Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. Following that, he landed the role of Barney in the hit show How I Met Your Mother, which ended up earning him four straight Emmy nominations, and from there his career really began to boom once again. He was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in 2010, he also hosted the Primetime Emmy Awards in 2009 and 2013, as well as the Academy Awards in 2015. At that event in particular, Neil made history becoming the first openly gay man to host the Academy Awards. Coming number 6, Matthew McConaughey. Similar to Brendan Fraser, when Matthew made his big comeback, it was dubbed the McConaissance. Matthew's first breakout role was in the film Dazed and Confused, but by the early 2000s, he kept being typecast for romantic comedies. Now, to most people, you'd think, how can you call this a failure if he's still working in Hollywood? But for an actor who wants to take on more diverse roles and really level themselves up as a thespian, if you will, getting pigeonholed into one category can be quite damaging to your career. But by 2013, he slowly got to have more control over his career choices, and thus he was able to take on roles that he actually preferred. He ended up being nominated for an Emmy for True Detective and won an Oscar for his role in Dallas Buyers Club. Plus, he had a great starring role in The Wolf of Wall Street. Now with him putting out his own book, Matthew McConaughey can no longer be put into a singular category of entertainment. Coming to number 5, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle began his stand-up comedy career at a very young age and was even featured in a montage of random people telling jokes for the first episode of ABC's America's Funniest People. He became a household name when his satirical comedy sketch series called The Chappelle Show really took off. Although at the height of the show's success, Dave declared that 
there was something wrong with Hollywood and then he wanted no part of it. This meant that he was choosing to walk away from a $50 million contract with Comedy Central. He then picked up and moved his family to South Africa to stay out of the limelight for a little more than a decade. Even upon returning to America, Dave never moved his family to NYC or LA, instead he chose to raise his kids in Yellow Springs, Ohio. Yellow Springs is a small community outside of Dayton that Chappelle remembered fondly from past family vacations when he was a child. He even participated in a town council meeting to advocate for police reform. Even though he signed a Netflix deal bringing him in $20 million per special, safe to say that even with Hollywood trying to make him out to seem like a crazy person and a failure for leaving the Chappelle show, Dave is back and better than ever. Coming in number 4, Martha Stewart. If you don't know, in 2004, Martha was sentenced to 5 months in prison after being found guilty of lying to investigators who were trying to suss out if she and her stockbroker buddy were doing insider trading. I'm not going to get into what insider trading is, but all you need to know is that it's illegal. Shortly after news of her border denial went public, the UK Border and Immigration Agency released a statement that said the government will continue to oppose entry to the UK for those who have been found guilty of a serious criminal offense abroad. I suppose they wanted to make an example out of someone, and Martha Stewart's a good person to do that, because lying to a government agency is considered a federal crime in the United States, and because of that you're more likely to be automatically banned from entering some other countries. But after getting out of prison, Martha managed to make her way back to the top of being a popular television personality. She even started her own show with Snoop Dogg called Martha and Snoop's Potluck Dinner Party, which is an amazing combination of personalities. Coming in number 3, Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke has had such an interesting career. After he became well known in the 80s as a Hollywood tough guy and a symbol of masculinity, Mickey's career kept being overshadowed by his personal life. By 1991, he had quit acting and started a career in boxing, although this career was not as kind to him. He had gone undefeated in 8 fights with 6 wins, 4 of which were knockouts, but the damage he took from these fights was horrendous. He's broken his nose, toe and ribs, plus he had a compressed cheekbone and split his own tongue. Because of this he would require plastic surgery, but Mickey would later say that he chose the wrong person to do it because the surgeon had left his face a complete mess. Fortunately this actually ended up working in his favor. After being cast as the menacing and bruising character of Marv in Sin City, his career was launched yet again. Plus he gave the performance of a lifetime in the 2008 film The Wrestler and ended up being part of the MCU in the Iron Man franchise. Coming in number 2, Alec Baldwin. Similar to Mickey Rourke, Alec Baldwin's career was also overshadowed by his own personal issues. He has never been too far from the public eye, but his career did come to a full stop after a very public divorce from Kim Basinger, which ended up being finalized in 2002. He first became a big star in Hollywood in the early 1990s with his roles in The Hunt for Red October, The Marrying Man, and Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. However, because of his personal life, he tried to seclude himself from the public eye as much as possible, but by 2006 he made a big comeback thanks to Tina Fey and 30 Rock. Not to mention his roles on the big screen in The Cooler, The Aviator, and The Departed. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Eminem. The story of Marshall Mathers is without a doubt one of the most legendary rags to riches tales in the world of entertainment. At 14 years old, he began rapping in clubs in Detroit, Michigan, and he missed school so much that he had to repeat the ninth grade three times before he finally decided to just drop out. He was a big part of the underground rap battling scene, and when he placed second in the freestyle category at the 1997 Rap Olympics in LA, he drew the attention of Dr. Dre. From there, he rose to become the best selling artist of the 2000s. Unfortunately, though, in 2005, he had to cancel his European tour and be treated for addiction to prescription sleeping medications. Plus, after losing his dear friend Proof, he became very depressed. Speaking with XXL Magazine, he says, I think it kind of hit me so hard. It just blindsided me. I just went into such a dark place that with everything, the drugs, my thoughts, everything, and the more drugs I consumed, and it was all depressants I was taking, the more depressed I became, the more self-loathing I became. But in 2009, he released the album Relapse. Then in 2017, he was back making music regularly and teaming up for big collabs with people like Beyonce, Ed Sheeran, Pink, and many more. And at number 10, Jake Paul. Jake Paul used to be one of the biggest vloggers on the platform, and his content house Team 10 made permanent changes in the way that creators on YouTube collaborate. But as the years went on, the Team 10 house became harder to manage, and people weren't watching the group's videos anymore. Jake transitioned into other ventures like entrepreneurship. But even with the big changes that he's made, Jake has still been pretty consistent with his YouTube content at that point. But then his own views started tanking, and his young audience didn't like seeing the mature content that he was putting on his channel. Because of all the toxicity surrounding the platform, Jake's announced that he was quitting YouTube a number of times over the years. The last time he announced that he was planning to quit was in 2019, but he never officially left. Since then, he's been posting inconsistently and usually only posts when he has a big fight he needs to promote. Recently, Jake posted that he was back on YouTube in a video from November of 2021. But ever since that 2019 announcement, his views have been on a decline and it seems that fans don't care about what he's making anymore. And at number 9, James Charles. James Charles was at one point the biggest beauty YouTuber on the platform, and he was so popular he even got major celebrities to collaborate with him on his channel, like Kylie Jenner and Doja Cat. 
but there have been so many ups and downs in his career, it seems the beauty community is tired of him. After his Bi Sister cancellation in 2019, he was able to come back and be better than ever in 2020. But then he got in another massive scandal in 2021, and he was forced to leave the community and completely rebrand himself. After about four months away, he came back in July and started posting videos again. But he's not even close to as popular as he once was before. He used to get over like 5 million views a video easily, but now he struggles to get even 2 million. Of course, these are still massive numbers, but it's clear that there's been a noticeable decline. Also, he's not able to get the all-star collabs that he once did, because no celebrity wants to hurt their brand by working with him. And at number 8, Jeffree Star. Jeffree Star is another beauty mogul who was on top of the beauty game, and it was hard to go anywhere on social media without seeing him or his makeup. But after all his cancellations and problematic behavior, even his diehard fans could not stand behind him anymore. His beauty collections used to sell out in minutes, and his channel was getting around 10 million views a video. But following his last cancellation in July of 2020, his views have not recovered. His newest videos barely even crack over a million views, and he's struggling to sell his beauty products when they launch. He's also just not as interesting as he used to be, and fans are bored of the same old, same old from him. And at number 7, Jaclyn Hill. Jaclyn Hill was the laughing stock of the beauty community after her disastrous lipstick launch that's still considered the worst beauty launch in the history of YouTube. Since then, she's come back to YouTube to launch something new, then leaves when she encounters any sort of negative attention. It seems that her videos are either talking about a problem in her life or talking about why she might be quitting social media. Her views are still decent, but nobody takes her or her launches seriously anymore, and she's struggling to keep her fan base engaged with her videos. And at number 6, Tati Westbrook. Tati Westbrook is another beauty YouTuber who was on top of her game and was known for her polished style. She didn't engage in the drama in the beauty world and was known to be unproblematic compared to people like Jeffree Star and James Charles. But that all changed after the drama getting scandal that she single handedly started. During 2019 to 2021, Tati took multiple long breaks on her channel. She even made two videos exposing other YouTubers, trying to get the viewers back on her side. But it didn't really work either time. As of now, she's moved on from the drama and is posting regularly on YouTube again. She's still pretty successful, but not like she once was. She's also announced Tati Beauty is closing down, most likely due to the lawsuits the brand has been facing. Highway number 5, Raw Vanna. Former vegan YouTuber Raw Vanna was known for her raw cooking videos, where all of her food would be completely raw vegan. She gained popularity for her What I Eat in a Day videos and was one of the platform's largest vegan creators. But that all changed when she was exposed for eating fish while still claiming to be vegan. After her secret was revealed, she came on YouTube and said she'd quit being a vegan because she was experiencing health issues that were cured when she started incorporating eggs and fish into her diet. For months after her explanation video, her channel was flooded with hate and dislikes, but she still kept posting videos of her new life, hoping that everybody would forget. As of now, her views have tanked, and her entire vegan fanbase has left her. And at number 4, Trisha Paytas. Trisha Paytas is the most scandalous person on YouTube, and does anything possible to get clicks. Trisha was beloved by the community in 2020, when she started the Frenemies podcast with Ethan Klein. People loved their dynamics, and loved the way they were exposing other famous YouTubers like David Dobrik. But the love affair did not last long, and Trisha's toxic behavior was exposed by Ethan, which ended the show for good. At this point, most of the internet has turned on Trisha, and she's doing whatever she can to make videos that people will want to watch. But she's back with her old antics, making videos trolling and doing crazy things for clicks. And at number 3, Olivia Jade. Olivia Jade had it all. She was beautiful, rich, and had famous parents. She even managed to break out of her parents' shell and was recognized for her own social media talents. But that all changed when it was exposed that she bribed her way into USC and used her privilege to buy her way into university by pretending to be a rower. She stayed off her channel for close to a year while her parents were fighting their legal battle. She's now back and posting again, but she doesn't have the same influence that she once had. And under pretty much all of her posts, someone will comment about the USC scandal or ask Ask her about rowing. And at number two, J Station. J Station has been getting in hot water for years now. He started getting hate on the platform after he would take advantage of the deaths of other celebrities and make Ouija board videos trying to contact them. Obviously, extremely disrespectful. Then he got in even more hot water in 2020 when he posted a video claiming that his girlfriend named Alexia had passed away. He then made a video trying to contact her, even though he knew that she was alive. She then came forward on her own channel, saying that he made everything up, and she broke up with him because he was incredibly toxic to her. After this, he was arrested by Toronto Police, and his monetization was stripped from his main channel. Both of his channels were later deleted by YouTube, and he's threatened legal action to get them back. As of now, he was forced to make a second channel that only has 27,000 subscribers at this point, and it's clear the internet does not want him back. And finally, at number one, Leafy is here. 
Leafy is here as one of the most infamous YouTubers ever. He grew rapidly when his channel first started, but it was stalled by YouTube after they gave him multiple community guideline strikes. YouTube made it clear they did not like his content, and they didn't want him to be the face of the platform. iDubbbz then made a content cop addressing everything wrong with Leafy, and Leafy decided to leave the platform for over two years. He then came back in 2020 and was growing rapidly once again. But then he was hit with three community strikes, and his channel was terminated by YouTube. Before his channel was deleted, he was constantly criticizing Twitch streamer Pokimane, which is not accepted on YouTube. Leafy told Keemstar that he didn't receive any emails about specific videos prior to the ban, and it seemed like a coordinated takedown. After the ban, YouTube posted a statement about the decision, saying, quote, We have strict policies that prohibit her on YouTube, and we remove content that violates our policies when flagged to our attention. Channels that repeatedly violate our policies will be terminated. And a spokesperson confirmed that the ban is permanent, and Leafy will not be allowed on YouTube ever again.